Winston was dreaming of his mother. He must, he thought, have been ten or eleven years old when his mother had disappeared. She was a tall, stay, statuesque. Statuesque. She was a tall, statuesque, rather silent woman with slow movements and magnificent hair. And magnificent fair hair, his father he remembered more vigorous, more vaguely, more vaguely, his father he remembered more vaguely as dark and thin, dressed always in neat, always in neat, neat, dressed always in neat dark clothes. Winston remembered especially the very thin. Soles of his father's shoes, and wearing spec spectacle, spectacles, spectacles, and wearing spectacles, the two of them must evidently have been sold up in one of the first great purges of the fifties. At this moment, his mother was sitting in some place, deep down beneath him, with his young. Sister in her arms, he did not remember his sister at all, except as a tiny, feeble baby, always silent, with large, watchful eyes. Both of them were looking up at him. They were down in some subterranean place, the bottom of a well, for instance, or a very deep grave. But it was a place which already far below him. Was itself moving downwards. They were in the salon of a screen ship, looking up, looking up at him through the darkened water. There was still air in the salon. They could still see him as he then, but all the while they were sinking down, down into the green waters, which in another moment must hide them from sight forever. He was out in the light. And air, where they were being sucked down to death, and they were down there before he was up there, because he was up there, he was up here. He knew it, and they knew it, and he could see the knowledge in their faces. There was no reproach either in their faces or in their hearts, only the knowledge that they must die in order that they might, that he might remain alive. And that, this was part of the unavoidable order of things. He could not remember what had happened, but he knew in his dream that in some way the lives of his mother and his sister had been sacrificed to his own. It was one of those dreams which, while retreating the characteristic dream scenario, ah.、Uh, A continuation of one's intelligent, intellectual life, of one's intellectual life, and in which one becomes aware of facts and ideas which still seem new and valuable after one is awake. The thing that no suddenly struck Winston was that his mother's death, nearly thirty years ago, had been tragic. Tragic. Had been tragic and sorrowful in a way that was no longer possible. Tragedy. Tragedy. He perceived belonged to the ancient time, to a time where there was still privacy, love, and friendship, and when the members of family stood one another without needing to know the reason. His mother's memory tore at his heart because she had died, loving him. Then he was too young and selfish to love her in return, and because somehow he did not remember how she had sacrificed herself to a conception of loyalty that was private and unedible. Such things he saw could not happen today. Today there were fear. Hatred and pain, but no dignity or emotion, no deep or complex sorrow, 
as this. He seemed to see in the large eyes of his mother and his sister, looking up at him through the green water, hundreds of feminine down and still sinking. Suddenly, he was standing on short spring turf on a summer even on a summer evening when the slanting rain slanting when the slanting rays of the sun glazed the ground, the landscape as he was looking at recurred so often. Recurred. The landscape, the landscape, the landscape as he was looking at recurred so often in his dream as he was never fully certain whether or not he had seen it in the real world. In his working thought, he called it the golden country. It was an old, drabbed by ten pasture, with the foot track winding across it and a more hill here and there. In the ragged hedge, on the opposite side of the field, the bow of the elm trees were swaying very faintly in the breeze, their leaves just stirring in dense masses like women's hair somewhere near at hand, though out of sight, there was a clear, slow-moving steam, we are days. Days. Slow-moving steam, we are days, was swimming in the pools under the willow trees. The girl with dark hair was coming toward them across the field. With what seemed a single moment, he tore off her clothes and flung them disdainfully, and flung them disdainfully aside. Her body was white and smooth, but it was, but it aroused no desire in him. Indeed, he barely looked at it. What overwhelmed him in that instant was admiration for the gesture with which she had thrown her clothes aside. With its, with its grace and carelessness, it seemed to alienate a whole culture, a whole system of thought, as through Big Brother and the party and the thought policy could all be swept into nothingness by a single splendid movement of the arm. That, too, was the gesture belonged to the ancient time. Winston woke up with the word Shakespeare on his lips. The telescreen was giving forth an ear-splitting whistle, which continued on the same note for 30 seconds. It was not his 7.15. Getting up time for office workers, Winston wrenched his body out of bed naked, naked, out of bed naked. For a moment, all the outer party received only 3,000 clothes coupon annual, annually, and the sealed of uh, Pajamas. Pajamas. And the suit of pajamas was a 600 and the seized a dining singlet and a pair of swords that were lying across a chair. The Fairco Jacks would, be, would begin the Fairco Jacks would begin in three minutes. The next moment he was doubled up by a violent coughing feed, which nearly always attacked him soon after waking up. It emptied his lungs so completely that he could only that he could only begin breathe again by lying on his back and uh, taking a series of deep grasps. His veins had swelled with the effect of the cold, and the virus unclear. And the varicose ulcer had started itching. Varicose ulcer. And the varicose ulcer had started itching. And the varicose ulcer had started itching. And the various ulcer had started itching. And the various ulcer had started itching. 32 40 group, yapped a piercing female voice. 32 40 group, take your place, please. 32 40. Winston sprang to attention in front of the text screen, upon which the image of a youngest 
upon which the image of a youngish woman, scrambled by muscle, dressed in tunic and gym shorts, had already appeared. I'm Benny and the strings, he rapped out. Take your time by me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, comrades. Put a bite of life not into. Put a bite of life into it. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. The pain of the coffin feet and the not quite driving out of Winston's mind the impression made by his dream. And the wrist mic movements of the exercises restored it uh, somewhat. As he mechanically sought his arms back and forth, wearing on his face the looks wearing on his face the look of dream enjoyment which was uh, considerable which was uh, considered uh, proper during the physical jacks. He was uh, struggling to his way backward into the dim period of his early childhood. It was extraordinarily difficult. Beyond the later fifties, every faded. Beyond the later fifties, everything faded. When there was no external record that you could refer to, even the outline of your own life lost its sharpness. Even the outline of your, even the outline of your own life lost its sharpness. You remembered huge events, which had quite probably not happened. You remembered the detail and instant without being able to recapture their atmosphere. And there were long black periods to which you could assign nothing. Everything had been different then, even the name of countries and their ships on the map had been different. Air Strip 1 for instance, had not been so called in those days. It had been called England or Britain, though London, he felt fairly certain, had always been called London. Winston could not definitely remember a time when his country had not been at war, but it was evident but it was evident that there had been a fair long interval of peace during his childhood, because one of his early memories was of an air rapid, because one of his early memories was one, because one of his early memories was of an air red, which appeared to take everyone by surprise. Perhaps it was the time when the atomic bomb had fallen on Colchester. He did not remember the red itself, but he did remember his father's hand clutching his own as they hurried down, down, down into some place deep in the earth. Round and round, a spiral staircase was run under his feet and which finally so veered his legs that, had, that he began whispering and they had to stop and rest. His master his mother, his mother, in her slow, dreamy way, was falling a long way behind them. She was carrying his baby sister, or perhaps it was only a bundle of basket that she was carrying. She was not certain whether his sister had been born then. Finally, they had emerged into a nasty, crowded place, which he had realized to be a tube station. There were people sitting all over the stone, flagged the floor, and other people packed tightly together, packed tightly, tightly, packed tightly together, were sitting on metal box, one above the uh, one above the other. Winston and his mother and father found themselves a place on the floor, and near them, an old man and an old woman were sitting side by side on a bunk. The old man had on a decent dark suit and the black clothes cap pushed back from very white hair. His face was uh, separate and his eyes were blue and full of tears. He reckoned of Jean.
it seemed to press out of his screen in place of sweat, and one could have fashioned that the tears veiling from his eyes were poor gin. But though slightly drunk, he was also suffering under some grief that was the genial and the unbearable. Genuine. Under some grief, that was the genuine and the unbearable. In his childish way, Winston grasped. In his childish way, Winston grasped that some terrible thing. In his childish way, Winston grasped that some terrible thing, something that was beyond the forgiveness and could never be redeemed, and could never be remedied. Had just happened. It also seemed to him that he knew what it was. Someone who, someone whom the old man loved, a little granddaughter, perhaps had been killed. Every few minutes, the old man kept repeating, "We didn't ought to have trusted her." I said so, Ma. Did I? That's what comes so truly trusting. That's. What comes of at was that's what comes of trusting her. I said so all along. We didn't ought to have trusted the buggers. Buggers. We didn't ought to have trusted the buggers.